Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? For live. Are you ready? Let's do it. Are you ready? This live. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? For the word of the day, the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Are you ready? For live talk, yeah. because it's about time to set, set it, it on. on. Are you ready? Let's go. For the word of the day, hey. the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Say Are you what? ready? For live talk, yeah. because it's about uh. time uh. to set it uh. on. Uh. Going all the way live with it. With live talk, increase your mentality, put away carnality, and increase your spirituality. Let's Are you go. ready? Live talk. Are you ready? This live talk. Are you ready? Live talk. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? Live talk. For the word of the day, uh. the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Are you ready? For live talk, because it's about time to set it off. Well, Shalom, Hotep, greetings, and welcome everyone to Live Talk. I'm your host, Arthur Jeremiah, alongside my co-host, Minister Samuel. Welcome. Great to be back again. Other co-host, Jubael. Peace, peace. How are you? All right. So we do have another hot topic, and of course we want all of you to be able to join in on this topic today. Um, but before we get to that topic, we're going to give you just a quick rundown today. Like always, we're going to have our minister open us up with an inspirational word of today. And then we'll get right into the main topic of the day. And right after that, we'll have some uh, words from our ambassador, Subael, on what's going on in society today. And then you have the author. Um, give you a, the author book of the day, uh, something that can really, uh, you know, en enhance your, your your knowledge. So we look forward to that. And then we'll come up with our announcements and we'll end and conclude after that. So with no further ado, we get right into the word of the day from the minister. Minister, can you give us the word of the day? All right. So going in, in um, trying to be in uh, one with our topic today about maleness and manhood. The thought <clears throat> for today is being male is a matter of birth. Being a man is a matter of age. But being a real man is a matter of choice. So we're going to take that one and let it... Um, leads into our conversation yes sir yes sir well we're not going to hold up on this we're going to get right into it you know if many of you have been following um, my topic is maleness versus manhood and it's identifying a true man and we know we come from different households uh, we have different belief systems that we was raised up on so we're going to discuss some of those today, and we're going to try to come from a point where we can just share information that can better us as men uh, or even as young men, you know, because it's all about trying to steer that young person in that right direction into becoming a man. All right. So the first question we're going to get right into is what is a male? <clears throat> now, a male to me is basically a gender. Right, pretty much a male is a gender, um, a masculine gender, gender though, right? When one think of masculinity, you think of being what strong and, and, and bold, right? Mm -hmm. You know, as a boy coming up, I often looked at, you know, the super friends and always yeah. kind of <laughs> watch wrestling, you know, because it was a boyish thing yeah. to do, right? right you know, right, you right. you always did these type of things because that's what you've seen. Yeah, have power to it, right? <laughs> but the thing about it, 
all that was fictitious. You know, we, we think about those type of things, but then you have to deal with the real world and what you've been taught actually in your household, like what you're seeing in your community. And a lot of the things that I seen was not portraying what a, a true man was supposed to be. So we're going to throw that out there. You know, when it comes to a male, what is a male? And I'm going to start, I'm going to go, I'm going to go this way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man, that's a very, very deep topic. And it runs personal with me uh, because I grew up under manness, maleness, mm -hmm. maleness. You know, um, I had a brother, I grew up with two older brothers and one of them was a, uh, what was, what is you just defined as a man? Mm -hmm. You know, he, yeah. you know, he was a, he was an athlete, student athlete, won nationals, uh, the 1990 nationals for uh, wrestling. Um, he was uh, the best defensive world, uh, player of the year for like three years straight, mm -hmm. you know, he, Played baseball, you know, so he, he just has to see these guys in the in the locker room, you know, like literally banging their heads on the lockers and stuff like that. Wow. But growing up, you know, he instilled in me a particular thought. Mm -hmm. And and his way of thinking when he taught me was that I had to be tough. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to endure pain. And he would, you know, physically, you know, abuse me. Mm. You know, to ensure that I can take this pain. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, as a kid, that is shocking to the mind. Yeah. You know, to, to you know, um, I, did, I did not like to eat uh, bread mm. as a kid. You know, so I would eat the, the bologna or the ham or the hot dog or the hot sausage mm. without bread. And, and man, I prepared myself for the three licks I'm going to get. You know, a slap. <laughs> A punch, and then another slap, like I was a wow. a man, you know, mm -hmm. and that came from what he learned from his dad, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I can you know I can remember like my my father, for example, you know, um, the one main thing he always taught me was that you know never let no one see you cry, mm -hmm. never complain about something. You know, if, if it's something that needs to be done, go out and do it. You know, and that's that maleliness. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To just endure. You know, not to, to seek a, a friend, not to seek, you know, a, a true uh, relationship with somebody, you know, mm -hmm. because you can't let nobody close. You can't because they're going to try to use you. That, that's the thought I grew up under as a male. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can't trust nobody. The world is out to get me. And, and it seems real to me because my whole brother beats me up. Yeah. <laughs> but so uh, yeah, I think that was a, a very, a very good subject for this week, Brother Arthur. Um, and, and what the minister was saying, you know, that uh, to think about a real man, you know, and, and I'm gonna get into that later of thoughts because that's the my other brother. Now, my other brother is a man. You know, this this is a guy that's, uh, you know, if there's a problem, he is seeking out help from whoever can help him. And we're going to get right into that because I want you to share a little <laughs> bit more about that. Uh, for those of you that um, are on and listening, our listening audience, we do want you to participate, chime in. Uh, we would like to hear from you. Um, <clears throat> we we um, want to make sure that the information that we're sharing today uh, can benefit and also can help someone. So that's why we're having this conversation because um, a lot of us are parents, we're fathers, you know, and and whether we know it or not, many of us may not have had the the right upbringing, you know, and and like like my brother here sharing, you know, and and that's that's powerful because it can affect you as you get older. But I'm I'm gonna continue on if if I mean by you can uh, unmute yourself. If you want to chime in um, on this conversation, if you're calling in, you can hit star six um, to unmute yourself, and we'll also um, you can also join the call that way. Minister, when it comes to a male, <laughs> well, you, I mean, I 
know, our ambassador has some serious points um, on maleness. And I have to think back growing up um, just to make it practical and real on what, what you thought about being a male. And unfortunately, a lot of, there was a lot of confusion because the line between male and man weren't really distinguished. Mm -hmm. So we, <clears throat> like we thought all that to be a man, but it, the maleness, like I can go back and think of, I'm, I'm gonna go way back. So if some of y'all remember, we had role models or we had, shouldn't have been necessarily no role models, but these were what we thought about is they were males. Like, I don't know if any of y'all remember, Superfly. Oh, Superfly. That's my not jealous. No, no. No, no, even no, no, no. Superfly. Oh, Superfly. Oh, Superfly. <laughs> OK, I know Superfly. I mean, we had <laughs> Superfly. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah Superfly. Super yeah. Super, I forgot about that one. But it's like, even uh, you had people like Dolomite. What yeah. was he saying? Yeah. I stick my finger in the ground and turn the whole world around. <laughs> and so that was a. That was that was true maleness, but we mm -hmm. looked on that as man as, as Superfly. He, he was a pimp, mm -hmm. had the yeah. biggest, finest car in the hood. All these women working for him. That was maleness, but we we looked up to that and we thought that was what it was to be a man. So we we if we weren't careful, as, ascribed to that. Um, even we had we had Shaft, and he was a police officer. Um, but he he blurred them lines real close about what was the law and what wasn't the law because was because Shaft was a sure enough male and you won't go mess with him because because he had that badge he throw that thing in the garbage in a minute right right and come out and show you how what we thought was a man but he was being a male but like you were saying we it it was taught to be to be tough um, yeah you don't want people to pick on you but it even got to the point. To where we go out and pick on people and pick on fights to prove that you were a male yeah. to make you feel secure because we weren't having those conversations about manhood and maleness so we kind of gravitated to the maleness mm -hmm. and so the strongest the biggest and the baddest was the man and was the male Mm -hmm. That don't mean he was the best, or he was the good, or the goodest, which is not a proper word. He was not good, but he was considered to be a male. Mm -hmm. He was, just, and and we, unfortunately, a lot of us confuse that with being a man. And I think that still lies in our society today <clears throat> from things that we were taught. Yeah, and I think masculinity is, yes. is the right word yes. when yeah. you when you're trying to describe even even you know a, a male or a man. You know, because a male is a man, but is there's a certain you know quality mm -hmm. of that individual that determines a true man, you know. Um, <clears throat> a male is is also a sex because we have like male and female, yes. um, you know, being a, a a man or a boy. The problem is if we're not groomed into becoming a man, then we come into adulthood living a boyish type life. Right. Yep. You know, and you taking a lot of those lessons or things that you have not learned into manhood. And now you're getting with a lady or a woman <clears throat> and you treating her based on what you have not been really trained to do, you know, <laughs> um, coming from that 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 um, that um, adolescent age. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> before I get into. The, the next um, topic or the next question here, I still want to remind our audience that, you know, um, the lines are open. You can um, chime in, you can unmute yourself, um, and then we can recognize you and you can come in and chime in on this conversation. <clears throat> but I, I thank everyone for coming in. Um, all Everyone, I, I can see everyone that's coming in. I thank you for coming in. Definitely, um, I want you to be able to add to the conversation that we're having today. And we're talking about maleness versus manhood. And we just kind of discussed a little bit about maleness and the difference. We, well, we didn't go deep into the differences of it, but which we are going to do. But we're going to talk a little bit about manhood. We're going to talk a little bit about because it's coming from a male or adolescent 
you know, age, you know, we go into adulthood, which like I just explained, don't necessarily mean you're a man. It just says that, okay, you are a certain age now that you can be considered a man mm-hmm. as you can begin to act like a man. Because <laughs> I, have, I have a son, you know, he's, you know, of age, you know, but he still have his boyish ways, you know, he still had that at a adolescent, you know, how he act, you know, and I always share with him, I say, you're, you're not a man, just because you became of age, a man is expected to have a certain amount of attributes, yes. you know, so when we think about a man that's going into the, the definition of a man, I want to share a quote that I um, had from, and this quote comes from um, Ralph Immersion, and what he said was, nothing can bring you peace but yourself. And nothing can bring you peace but the triumph of principles. Mm. So when I think about a real man, I think about a principled man, you know, and I always just say my with myself, I, you know, I tell people I'm a principled man. Because when you become a man, there are certain principles that you live by, right? <clears throat> you have to have certain principles, right? <laughs> One that is spiritually connected to its creator and have a deep respect for mankind because you have to have a respect for mankind in order to be a man. Um, someone that can be a good husband and or a good father because you don't have to be married to be a good man because some things can happen, but you do have to be a good father to be a good man. Having principles of virtue in your life drives that responsibility. You know, it drives you into doing those things that you are supposed to do as a man. Right. So I'm going to toss it around again as being a man, um, what that looks like, what, what's the definition, what's the meaning when it comes to man? And I'm, I'm going to go this way this time, uh, Minister. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to do a little back and forth on that one um, about a man. For example, and it's a misconception, um, a man can make a baby. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But a fool can make a baby. You better believe it. <laughs> a man will take care of, raise, support, and educate his progeny. Um, a man can get any woman he wants. That's a misconception. A real man does not just want any woman. That's, that's, that's it. You're right. right. <laughs> and now, when you said, I'm a, a misconception, I'm a man when I turned 18 years old. Right. I don't see a lot of old fools. Being 18 doesn't make you a man because there are a lot of old fools running around. Better so believe it. What makes you a man <laughs> is your actions. Being a spiritual person, being a man, I can do whatever I want to do. Mm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. A real man realizes that while he is free to do whatever he chooses, he is not free from the consequences of those choices. That's it. And, and this may even stir some more conversation. <laughs> I believe a real man acknowledges that there is a God who's greater than himself, a supreme being, a Godhead, a deity, a divine mind, a creator, oneness perfect peace or infinite wisdom. A real man acknowledges that there is something in this universe that's greater than himself Mm. that he should ascribe to connect to and become a part of. I I don't even want you to stop. (laughs) (laughs) But you you know that and, and, and that's true on every level when we think about it. You know, we have different um, cultures and you know even what we're sharing right now um, th- that's crossed the line when it comes to a man there are certain qualities mm-hmm. of a man the ideal of a man that we've been raised up on like we mentioned before the, the male ideal of being strong and being bold and being tough like you mentioned you know um, I got to get him tough enough you know uh, so that he can become a man you know that that don't make him a man because right, you hit right. him and trying to get him tough that don't make him a man. I mean, he's he has masculinity. He's a male 
at the end of the day. But he has to come into himself, teach him how and groom him to be a man. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to being a man, I'm a, now I, I just went to the minister and coming to you. As far as what, the, before I get to you, audience, <clears throat> I do want you to be able to chime in. Um, if by any means, if, if you want to chime in on this conversation, you can now. You can just unmute yourself. We can recognize you that way. Um, if you're calling in, you can hit star six. Uh, we can also unmute you. Uh, you can unmute yourself that way. And I'm trying to make sure that I have we got some people trying to um, chime in, but you can you can all you can chime in that way. Um, by all means, join the conversation. We do want to hear from you. Uh, we do want you to be able to share. Uh, so back to you, Ambassador. Um, as far as a man, what's that um, definition? Uh, what what's that idea of a? Oh, oh, hold on, we got a caller. Let's call. Let's call in. Caller with your line unmuted. Uh, give us your name. Shalom, brothers. My name is Cash Riel. Hey, Shalom. Greetings, hey, my brother. <laughs> shalom, Shalom. Um, this is my first time participating in the group session here, so I'm happy to, you know, give some feedback. Um, you gave three uh, classifications. One was male, one was man, and then there was real man. And each one of those classifications can be applied to a lot of different circumstances, many, many, many different circumstances. And um, personally in my life, I've had so many experiences that it's important for me to, to, to understand what the word real means because I can look in the mirror at myself and if I keep it real with myself I can tell honestly I'm 59 now I'm not a boy anymore but I can tell when I was a real man a man and when I was just a male I can I can you know I have enough knowledge wisdom understanding now to be able to 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 speak on that so Having said that, culture plays a big part in, in what a real man is. However, I believe not giving up, uh, being strong, and at the same time, not being uh, uh, overly strong, not abusively strong, being consistent, being responsible, acknowledging when one is right and acknowledging when one is incorrect and sometimes allowing those who may not be as strong as, as I may be to have their own headway, to let them follow their path so they can make their own mistakes and learn from their experiences, but at the same time being willing to say enough is enough when, when that decision has to be made. Also, uh, men come together and they don't always agree. And when they don't agree, sometimes to their, their detriment, meaning sometimes th they make a decision to leave, to separate. And, and, and when, when men come together and they believe in something higher than themselves, so much so that they're willing to put aside their differences to work towards obtaining or accomplishing that higher cause, I think that ability there is also a um, a, 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 a determination of, of manhood. And one last point I'd like to make or share this observation. Okay, the word man etymologically, its, its development, its origin comes from the word mind. Mm -hmm. And of course, those of us who've studied, we, we, we understand that the one mind Yahweh is the creator of, of all things. And we understand that the gender of male or female does not determine mind. Mind is, 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 is something which is, is, is genderless at the same time on this plane of existence, the husband 
and and wife, which is considered uh, traditionally to be male and female, they come together as one flesh, and through their differing ways of seeing and perceiving and doing things, they present a picture uh, on this earth of 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 the mind of Yahweh working as one. They they come together, and 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 people can see, okay, that's that's God working right there through through their interaction. Now, that's my perception. There are definitely perceptions which, which could be valid uh, uh, in, in, a, in, in different ways or different circumstances. However, I think the reality or the real test of time of what real men have done on this earth can be studied historically. And out of all the men that, that, that I've admired, I would, I would, I would strive and struggle to be like Yahweh bin Yahweh. I would strive to be like him. To me, for me, he is my example of being a real man. And I know full well there's been times in my life where I have not lived up to his example. And being honest with myself, I, I see that and I strive to 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 correct that. So that's my uh, uh, uh feedback on that topic. Gentlemen, Please. have a great rest of your day. Praise Yahweh. Appreciate you for chiming in and sharing that information with us. Um, definitely when it comes to a man, and you shared a lot when it came to just being principled, you know, and, and connecting with, you know, that same mindset as, as being principled. So we do thank you for chiming in. If anyone else want to chime in on the conversation, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and we can recognize you. Um, if you're on a call and you're calling in, you can uh, hit star six, and then we can recognize you that way as well. Uh, do we have any more callers? Young brother Yahoo, do we have any more callers? All right. So, yeah. brother, <laughs> huh? Okay, uh, caller, would you allow um, me? So long, Which brothers. <clears throat> um, this the Bell Hawkins. Well, how you doing, my brother? Greetings and welcome. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> hey, this this the author here. This author, <laughs> Bill Hawkins. <laughs> well, yeah, I told you I'd be here, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You sure did. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like listening and listening to the uh, brother that just previously spoke. Um, he made some good points and everything. Um, so I was just kind of like thinking about the reverse side of things. And, you know, in today's the new millennium and today, how the young adults kind of think um, due to like, I mean, we we are much older than them. So. You know, it's like I, I I just been trying to understand the way that this this new generation um thinks when it comes to being a man. Um so if you if you're making money, they think that's more of being a man. Oh, I oh, I made money regardless of how you making it, brother <laughs> did or you know, illegal or whatever. You know, it's like the younger generation feel like, oh, if I make money, I'm a man. So I just kind of like wanted to like get you guys to, you know, uh, chime in on that and, you know, give your opinion on on this new generation stuff that we really cannot overlook. And also the women, too, they some women kind of um, look at things. I mean, I don't know if it's in the water or what, but <laughs> some of the women. So they look at it like, oh, if he make money, he a real man, he a real man. But that don't make you a real man, in my opinion. So can you guys kind of like, you know, dig into that a little bit? Most definitely. I, I like to chime in on that. And before before I get to that, um, thank you, brother, for, for chiming in. And to the previous caller, he said something that really stood out to me, you know, um, defining uh, a characteristic trait of a man, you know, consistency. Because I believe wholeheartedly, you know, to my core, to my soul, that it is a man's duty to lead righteously. Mm -hmm. And to lead righteously, you must be consistent. 
And then that consistency is going to bring responsibility. You know, and then that consistency is going to bring forth an, um, uh, one of the points that the minister, uh, the minister brought out. You know, uh, I understand I have the free will, the choice to do what I want to do. But I also know the consequences. I know the good and the evil. You know, and, and, and a man in his responsibility and his consistency for doing what is right is going to always make that right decision. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a male, on the other hand, as your brother, uh, the author was just speaking about, a male, on the other hand, is just getting <clears throat> me necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, that's 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 the that's been the thought. That's that's not just not to not to be uh, argumentative, but that's been the train of thought, the conditioning of our people. As you spoke, superfly, uh, uh, before before then in the doo-wop era, mm -hmm. you know, it, that always been the thought that we have been conditioned to do, <clears throat> you know, by any means necessary, we got to get out here and get it. Mm -hmm. I got to bring the bread home. I got to get this bread and butter, mm -hmm. cabbage and peas and stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. and, but nowadays to the point of uh, what the brother was just saying is that in today's society with the overexposure of information because too much of something is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Too much of something is a bad thing. You know, um, the overexposure of information, social media, mm -hmm. has tainted the mind to where we, we spoke about this uh, previously on a couple of episodes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the influences That's because so these are of social media. Mm -hmm. Those influences are produced by influencers, mm -hmm. who again, you hear me say this a lot, are conditioning people. And they're conditioning people to think that, hey, if you want this, you got to do all this wickedness to get it. Mm -hmm. And then the women, on the other hand, as he was saying, they believe this to be true because this is what dudes is telling them. You know, I, I myself, I done said it a bunch of times. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm doing it for you, girl. I'm out here getting it for you. You know, I was 16 years old when I had my first child. Right? I was 16 years old. And, you know, she's like, baby, don't go outside. Don't do this. And my, the first thing I screamed, girl, I'm doing it for us. You know what I'm saying? I, I got to get us a car. You know you want to move out to mama's house. You know what? <laughs> you real. You know, keep, keeping it real. You know, and... <clears throat> Now it has progressed because they have made, and this is something I took note of, they have made the materialistic things so easy and attainable to get, but yet it's so hard to get. Meaning like, for instance, I can remember back in the days, you know, as a teenager, you know, you wouldn't have seen the average guy with Gucci on, Louis Vuitton. You, 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 you wouldn't have seen the average person with that. But now it's, it's easier because they want you because they have conditioned you to do whatever to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, when your favorite rapper, this is all he's talking about is, is, is Gucci, Louis, and Versace. And I, I heard one song, I asked my daughter uh, a couple of years ago, you know, her, her favorite rappers, and she was like the Migos. She was like, Daddy, you got to listen to the song. And the whole song, all they saying is Versace, Versace, Versace. <laughs> 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 But it produces a thought that is detrimental as a whole mm -hmm. because now it leads to violence. Because in that in that maleliness, you know, chaff, that, that thought of chaff, you know, the stud, mm -hmm. I can't let nobody try me. I can't let nobody disrespect me. This is my money. This is my territory. This is my area. But a man, first of all, won't put himself in a situation like that. I don't want to be locked up. I I, I love being free. <laughs> you know, and, and and that falsehood of being um coming from incarceration, you know, personally, I, I've I've done time. And you know, it's a lot of people that think that they get some type of rank mm -hmm. or whatever from, from being locked up, or you know, they get a, a, a status or whatnot. Street. A street cred, <laughs> but it's it's you know that like they say you the American dream is just that a dream mm -hmm. you're chasing a fantasy, you know and doing the things that they do nowadays it, it's it's so much that topic is so broad because it's a lot of different 
um points that goes into that you know the with the availability of guns mm -hmm. you know how, how is it that all these big guns are just in our neighborhoods easily e e easily <laughs> you know what i'm saying I, I can just go right around the corner and i can just purchase a gun long as it's room you know how, how is that but if i go on the other side of town if i ask somebody about a gun i'm, I'm probably going to be in feds in two hours <laughs> <laughs> right. you know so it's a lot of different points that go with that that's a very very good um point that the brother brought up thank you for chiming in for that okay minister you want to chime in on yeah that? i'm back i'm gonna, I'm gonna come out of what you said about how available those guns is in the neighborhood but have you ever noticed that the libraries in our neighborhood are always the smallest <laughs> <laughs> but they, they correlate it's real right right Keep it real. guns everywhere you know the bookstores are everywhere libraries are small but we got to travel to get to them but to, to the point that the brother was making about the youth is, and this is all about youth and maleness and manhood, that difference. Like he was saying, a man, they think they'll do anything for it. And you do have youth now to figure, hey, if I'm making that dollar, I'm a man. As long as I'm turning some paper, I'm a man. I heard a youth, this was a few weeks ago, He, because he'd been to prison. He, that make him a man. Hmm. You made a mistake. That it, going to prison didn't make you a man. You made a mistake that took you to prison. Mm -hmm. But his thought was because he'd been in prison that made him a man. And this is unfortunately it's generational. The younger generation now, they worse because they carry nine millimeters and AKs and everything <laughs> else. Mm -hmm. And they turn in paper on the street to make money. And they'll say that they bring it home, but but when you're a man, if you really want to build your community, you wouldn't put things in your community that would destroy your community. A male will do that. Yeah. But a man, you don't want to put things in your community to destroy the people in their community. Well, I'm going to sell it to this person because I don't know them. That's somebody's mother that you just sold that to. Yeah. That's somebody's sister that you just sold that to. When you man mm -hmm. and you begin to see beyond your <laughs> yourself, mm -hmm. you know, that's not something that I want to do to my community, to my family, to my children. Right. So it's the difference. But it, like you were saying, Ambassador, it even goes back to our time because the same thing was, hey, as long, get you a job and get a paycheck. When you bring home some money, you the man. <laughs> bring it back days. Man, I'm, a, I'm a strict plant-based vegan. I'm just putting that out there before I make this statement. But if you bring home the bacon, <laughs> you was the man. <laughs> the man had to bring home the bacon. And that's in our conception. As long as you got a job, as long as you're bringing home that bacon, you the man. But you may have had six children. Those children needed some time, but you would shift all that responsibility to the wife or to the girlfriend or to your woman because you brought home the bacon. So then the you bring up children thinking all they have to do is make some money. And that completes them as being a man. But they're <clears> missing <throat> a whole lot of elements of being a man. You know, I was going to share something real fast. I'm going I'm to get back to it. Call her with your line I'm muted. Uh, give us your name. Would that be Sister Schiffer? Yes, ma'am. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> nice greetings, welcome. everyone. Um, I'm not a male, <laughs> but I'm here and I have a little of opinion. <laughs> um, it's nice to see all of you. Hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say that this is a very vital uh, information that you all are putting out today. Um, it's not only for the male, but we have to go back to the root, which is the family the mothers, the grandmothers, grandfathers, um, because those, the, the community really, but we know nowadays that is just out of the window. <laughs> we, we really don't want the community raising our children because we know what the community has to offer. And this is a part of why boys or a male in their youth cannot make the distinction or know when it is time to move from uh, their youth into uh, maturity to become a man, um, experience, um, 
makes a person, period, male. I'm going to say male because that's the topic. They have to go through some things. But, you know, back from our roots, we got that experience from everyone in the family. Grandma, grandpa, uncles and aunts. Those people taught us. When you're a child in your youth, a male child, it's okay for you to be a youth. And we want our males to understand that at a certain point, it's okay for you to be a, a, a young man. When do you make the distinction of when it's time to transform? For some males, that may come earlier than others. There may not be a father in the home and mom has to teach just say she has four or six boys in the house and she's a single mom. And, and there's only really so much that a woman, there's a lot now that we can teach our men, but we do need that male figure in the house for, for certain things. So what I came on to say today is that we have to go back to the roots for those of us that still have and love on each other and have families, we have to allow the family to take part in teaching. If they're righteous <laughs> uh, um, and intelligent people, you know, that you trust with your children, you know, sometimes you may have to say, well, I try to talk to such and such about this or that, and he isn't really listening, but he looks up to this uncle. So maybe you can tell that uncle hey, you know, just when you're having a conversation with them, kind of slip this in. We still have to communicate with, with family members or friends or whoever it is that our children are influenced by, that whatever we have control over um, to make for our young men to make that transition uh, from a male, young youth to a full grown man. And that's yeah. all I had to say. <laughs> yeah, we thank you for uh, chiming in because that was huge. Well, you know, when you when you think about our young men today and you're trying to have a conversation with them, just about, you know, whether it's community or who you are, you know, <clears throat> they don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's going back to uh, what the other caller was talking about as far as our youth today. You know, drugs is a, a big component of our disconnect. Mm -hmm because it influences the minds of them you know you you i mean it ain't like honestly and maybe maybe it's just me but when i was coming up it may have been drugs out there but i couldn't get drugs in my community like that because the older heads Not like, like I, I wasn't old enough like boy you don't get away from right here <laughs> you couldn't get drugs you couldn't sell drugs um if you was uh under age or certain age. age you got 12 year olds, 13 year olds, smoking drugs, doing all type of stuff. And you can't have that, that conversation with them because they told their gun and they don't fear nobody, they're a man already, <clears throat> you know, and they're ready to shoot you, you know? And that's why we're having a lot of the incidents that we're having in our community because we got young men running around angry. Mm -hmm. So the police come in and then they're acting crazy and boom, they get shot. And now we got a young man uh, you know, a, a female dead because of how unrational they was thinking and acting, mm -hmm. you know, and we have to be very conscious of that. Being men in the community, when we're having those conversations with these young boys that may not have a, a good upbringing because the mothers or the fathers may be on drugs, the, the father may be in jail or, or, or prison, the grandma raising them, she, she's 70 years old, what's she going to really do you know so she can all she can do is provide him with some food and somewhere to sleep right. and lay his head and then the streets raising them you know so that's <clears throat> some of the challenges that we deal with and then another thing when we talk about you know we talk about you know you make money capitalism mm -hmm. you know and you know we're taught a man leads in righteousness and the woman follows in righteousness nowadays <laughs> you know these young boy leading in wickedness and then the women are following them exactly. in wickedness so it's like if you out there you're doing your thing you get you supposed to be doing your thing getting up getting this money however you're getting the money 
And this woman, she's seeing this like, okay, well, he getting he getting bread, you know, like I'm I'm gonna follow him, you know, I'm ride or die. Right, right. right <laughs> so right. these are these are what we these are the issues that we're dealing with in our in our communities, and we don't have those real men um, to step up, or we don't have these these young boys that are being raised by real men. And then we and and, and one of the things she said, you know, like even bringing it to an uncle. <clears throat> If, right, if right. he ain't been taught how to be a, a, a man, because I didn't have situations like that when you try to look for somebody else, because all the time when you're talking to your son and your daughter, they don't always listen to you. You're right, old, right. you don't right, know right. what's you going on. Social media is saying something totally different, <laughs> yeah. you know, and whatever you're talking about, sit down somewhere. But they will listen to somebody else. But that somebody else has to be that somebody that is actually either a true man mm -hmm. or a true woman. You know, when you're talking about, um, you know, directing your child to a certain individual, you want to make sure that that individual is conscious enough to be able to teach them and stir them in the right direction. So I think that is a key component when we're talking about, you know, um, building the, the character of our young men and, 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 and grooming them into manhood. <clears throat> and, and, and right quick, um, brother, I, I would like to say also, um, another big part of that is being involved in community activities. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of a lot of these kids, these younger guys, they don't know no other way, right. and, and it, it's become so easy for people to give up. Cause, like you say, they may not listen to you, but however, there is an uncle, a cousin, you know, a, a neighbor down the street that they will listen to. But if we're not interacting, and being a part of certain, you know, activities, you know, to show them, like, you know, um, they 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 defund the education system, right? Yeah. But there is no one going to, you know, these meetings to say, hey, no, no, we're yeah. not, no, we're you not going for that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there's no one doing that. And if you're not doing that, then guess what? Now the teachers is overworked. So now the teachers are over work, so now the kids at the schoolhouse just hanging out, chilling, doing whatever they do, you know, and then when they get home, they doing what they doing, but no one is building community activities. No one is showing these kids that, hey, you can still make money without breaking the law. Right. No one is showing them that, you know, no one is giving back of their, their natural resources, that man resource, mm -hmm. that mind, to teach them a different way. You know, they, they'll say this, they want this, and they want that, but it's kind of like um, a saying from an old movie, and I don't want to sound cliche, but it's the truth. Everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to die. <laughs> don't nobody want to put in the work. You know, don't nobody want to put in the work, but you want things to change. It, it's just not going to happen like that. We see what happens when you do the hands-off approach. The streets. The streets. Yeah. They teach them the streets. The streets don't teach them. The streets don't teach them. The streets don't teach them. You, they, they ready. Yeah. They they got a bunch of teachers. They right. they ain't underpaid. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Do we have another caller that's trying to chime in? Yes, sir. Caller this with the line unmuted. What's your name? My name is Cash Riel. That's my Hebrew Israelite name. Stephen Garcia is my government name. Well, yes, my parents sir. gave it to me, but that's the that's the hip thing to say it's my government name <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> you, know, you know um i wanted to like uh, okay i wanted to speak on the the the, the prison the, the prison thing and at the same time dovetail with the sister who called in about going back to the family um to me, it's obvious that good old fashioned family values, th those are the best values. And historically, I know there's been cultures that allowed behaviors that were not necessarily supportive of uh, good old fashioned family values, but it, it, it's been proven over time that a loving mother and father in a stable home raising children produces for the most part healthy children okay and many of us are familiar with how you know turning our backs on Yahweh the slavery thing and and breaking down of the family removing 
the, the black male from the family and, and just removing, you know, a, a, a male role model and, and a single mom raising, you know, you know, no children. We've, we've looked into that and we, and we've, we've studied it. And, and the reality of the situation is that now the consequences of all that we have to heal from, we, it has to be a healing. So one of the things that me personally, I have to do is, is first of all, I have to recognize I am not always the hero in the stories that I tell or in the experiences that I share about myself. As a matter of fact, let me retract that, okay? I really not trying to tell any stories. However, if I share experiences about my life and it, it appears as if I'm the hero of the story or I'm some sort of a grandiose figure within this, of this experience and somehow I come out on top. Well, the reality is that it's the, through the grace and mercy of God, Yahweh, that I'm even able to speak today. And the, any success that I may have beyond his grace and mercy is because I'm practicing those principles which lend themselves to being effective. I didn't always practice those principles and I suffered consequences. So when we talk about prison, we're dealing with people who have, have made poor choices in their lives for whatever reason. I, I, even if they were innocent, they were so close to something that was considered to be illegal that they were swept up in, in the circumstance, whether that, that being close was a personal choice or whether just they were born into a culture where that put them proximate to some, some, some dirt that was going on. Now, you have different types of people that are considered men. You got professional athletes and they grow up men. You've got, I guess you would call them bookworms, you know, or, or, or people who study chemists and scientists and they grow up men. You have gang members, street people who grow up, thugs, they grow up and they become that version of men. And for those who get to a certain level of, of it would be called respectability within that subculture, they're looked upon as at other by others who seek that same type of respectability as being an example. And interestingly enough, a real man in any circumstance is going to be respected by another real man in another circumstance, even if they go to war with one another, because they see the strength that's in one another. And I have a feeling, I really believe that no matter what circumstance a person is in, if they can just be taught good old fashioned family values if, if, if those values and they come from the bible if those they come from yahweh if those values can be taught i think that no matter what circumstance a, a, a young brother is in then that manliness can be can be brought out it's just a matter of, of, of not allowing that negativity that they're wrapped in to blind me from okay here's a person who may be receptive i have to see let me let me test the water see, see see how if they're receptive if they're not gotta let them go the life will soften them up but then if they are receptive i want to give them good old-fashioned family values in a way that they can accept you know and sometimes that's a learning experience so i just wanted to share that yes sir <laughs> I, life will soften them up <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, my brother, for sharing that information. Yes, sir. But one of the things I was um, thinking about, my you know, my son here came to me. He said, um, he said, um, God, Dad, I want you know, man, I'm gonna go out and get a job, you know, come and pay bills, and uh, that's what he said. <laughs> so. I think I got a call. A caller with your um, line unmuted. Uh, give us your name. G.K. Ezekiel. G.K. Ezekiel. How you doing, my brother? Welcome, welcome. You. <laughs> We're right ahead. The floor is well, sir. Yes, sir. Um, what I want to speak about is y'all being always teaches us that you must study the nature of a thing in order to get an understanding. 
So a male is one that's dictated by the physical appetite, the physical desire. He lacks a key ingredient. The brother said earlier that man epistemology is mine. Well, also the epistemology in Welsh is to think. And to think means to be able to reason in a logical sequence. So when I become a man, I become, I use reason. I use logic. So Isaiah chapter 3 verse 1 tells us the qualities of a man. And definition of a man in Welsh is also is one who has manly qualities such as strength, courage, honesty. So all of these terms right here are synonymous with morality or morals. So if what we're going to teach in order to bring the man back, because Genesis 126, he made man. So in order for us to make man today, then we must imbue him with the ingredients that are found inside the synonyms of the term moral. That's what will make us attractive. That's what will make us charming. That's what allowed the youth to see us and want to emulate our behavior. And this is what we got to focus on, learning these terms right here and begin to apply them first in ourselves, and then our community will see it and they'll be drawn to us. And this is how we lift the king up above the corner mindset. Because males are running rampant. That's what America makes. That's what the world makes. Because they're eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But only the king can make a man. So if we are the stewards of the wisdom of the king, then, as the art just said, we have to get back to the basic precepts that were espoused to us in the Old Testament. The attributes and qualities that are found inside of those words will make us men. It will allow us to have that character in which everybody that sees us will want to draw and be magnetized by the light that emanates from us. So it's just a matter of imbuing the terms. John 1 1, in the beginning was the word. So the king tells us to study these words, and then everything else is going to fall in line. This is what makes us a wise and understanding people in the eyes of all other nations. He gave us this method that he didn't give to anybody else on the planet. That's why we are peculiar chosen people. We just got to start applying that right there, and then we'll begin to multiply, and society will see that, and they're going to join in. That's all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, was you finished, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Total for um, chiming in, my brother, because you shared a lot of uh, deep information. Um, again, when we talk about um, a man, um, a man has to be principled. You know, he has to have more standards about himself. Because how can a, a, a son, a child, uh, imitate morality and, and eventually become a man or even a woman if they don't see that standard in place? So we definitely have to take on those more attributes that my brother was talking about and that my uh, other caller was talking about as well, being principal. But we do have a, um, I think we're at that time, do we have another caller that's trying to chime in? Before we go to a quick break. I'm not still unmuted, am I? I thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, I apologize. I was driving down the highway. Uh, <laughs> let me put myself on mute. Let me put myself on <laughs> right. Now, you know what, though? I, I was listening to the, to the brother who was just talking, and I'm sitting I'm in the truck looking at you three, and so many thoughts go through my mind pertaining to, you know, my, my past experiences with, with the nation of Yahweh, Yahweh bin Yahweh, my personal life, all the different brothers and sisters I've met since then. And I'm, I'm very blessed and, I, and, I, and I'm very thankful. However, I'm also aware of, of the work that needs to be done in the future. And sometimes I focus on my lack. You know, I, 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 more children I, I wish I had, 
more money I wish I had, more, more family around me I wish I had, so many things. And I know that when we seek first the kingdom of heaven, all things are added unto us. So I have this sense of urgency that I need to, 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 to just go out and do with what life I have left in this physical body. And I try to be assertive without being overly aggressive, although I know I can get overly aggressive. I try to temper that aggressiveness. You know, a lot of times I'll circle back and, and deal with people that I may have had harsh words with, but I try to stand up and represent myself in a way that shows that, okay, I believe in what I'm talking about, but I can also be corrected. Uh, sometimes I take that manliness to the point where, you know, I feel like I should start barking like a, a dog when, when I need to be calm and speak like a man. So, I, you know, I just wanted to share my self. And, yes. and I appreciate y'all for giving me the opportunity, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate, appreciate you. you brother. Keep it safe out there. Keep it safe. <laughs> All right. You family. got it. We're going to go to a quick break and then we'll be right back. Hey, it's Yermai Israel here, author and host of Live Talk. Just to ask you a question, have you purchased a new book, The Spiritual Significance of a Name? If not, why not? The Spiritual Significance of a Name is a book that can really put you on a journey to define it, who you are. Have you ever searched for your purpose or wondered about your purpose? Have you ever considered or thought about the names that you may name your children or even the name that you may have? These are all powerful thoughts that comes across your mind and it's all given to you through the Most High because he put us on this earth with a purpose and you can define your purpose within your name. Pick up the book today. Go to www.yeremiahisrael.com That's www.yere. M-Y-A-H-Y-I-S-R-A-E-L dot com and purchase the book. Purchase the book so you can be on your journey to defining your true purpose. All right, welcome back, family, to Live Talk. Um, it has been a hot conversation today. I appreciate everyone that has chimed in. The information has been powerful. Um, I hope you know anyone that's listening to um, us on Facebook and, and those that are um, on the call today on Zoom, um, that is information that can really enlighten and, and, and just some information that you can use. Um, <clears throat> wish we had more time, but we we don't. But I do want to share one thing. When it, when it comes in the part of, you know, defining your purpose, um, I had this conversation with my godson. And, you know, one of the things he shared with me, and he was dead serious. He was looking so serious. And I know I never really had that conversation with him when he told me this. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, God, that. <clears throat> he said, I'm going to go and get me a job. 
And he said, I'm gonna and I'm gonna pay bills. He said, I'm gonna be a man. <laughs> I said, Yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, you think the creator <clears throat> created you to go and get a job and pay bills. And he was just looking at me for a moment. <laughs> I said, son, I said, you have to find your why. Why was you created? You got to find your purpose. And one of the reasons uh, for me even writing the book, The Spiritual Significance of a Name, was for somebody to be able to dig into that information and say, what is my true, my true purpose? You know, ask yourself that question. Because you wasn't just created to make money. This society, like we, we mentioned before, it's a capitalist society. It's all about making money. <clears throat> and you forget who you are in the, in the mix of making money. Because I don't care who you are. And I think I was speaking about it a little bit in, in, in the book when I uh, make an example about being an attorney. You know, you go out and you're making all this, this money, but you never define who you were as a person. You never defined you. All you do is you base everything off of the wealth that you have, mm -hmm. but you never find your true purpose. <clears throat> so definitely, um, like always, I'm always um, encourage you to go to the website, uh, yearmyisrael.com, um, purchase the book, The Spiritual Significance of a Name. You also can go to um, the nation of YHWH.com. You can purchase that book there. Uh, definitely purchase the, the book, I think it'll be a great asset to, you know, <clears throat> you know, gaining that knowledge and just beginning that path of defining who you are, you know. And since we're talking about manhood today, it's another book that I would like to share. And it's, it's, this book is by Kyens, and he speaks about coding, it's decoding the true uh, manhood. <clears throat> And it's, it's one part in here I, I want to read. It's, it's a couple of things, but he talks about uh, four points of this, four key points. And the four points he talk about is truthful, rooted, and I think one of our sisters was talking about going back to our roots, mm -hmm. rooted, understanding our connection as men, and enlightened self-interest. You know, we talk about the things that we're, we're interested in, right? When we talk about our community mm -hmm. and the, the struggles in our community and the violence or the, the police brutality that's, that's going on in our community. So we have to have that common interest. And as men, we have to come together and we have to be able to begin to, you know, to have those conversations, but not only that com those conversations, but be a light. <clears throat> Like my other brother was saying, you know, uh, living those more attributes so that they can be able to see that light and say, hey, man, I don't have to just sell drugs or, or, or do things that are, that are against the law in order to be successful. Look at that brother there. Look at that man now. You know, that's the type of example that I wanted in my life and, men, and didn't have it. Because you'll find young brothers, man, 18 and 19. When they start to see this stuff, type of stuff, begin to cry mm -hmm. because they never seen what it was to be a true man mm -hmm. because they have been this this way all their life. <clears throat> Don't know how to treat their female companion, you know. So it's it's that's that's powerful, you know. When it comes to the, even the conversation, what we're talking about today, you know, I wish even and I don't know how many young people. Uh, young adults that may be on today, but I I, I pray that they're, they're able to receive something from this. And we're going to have this conversation um, next week as well. Well, the following week, I don't think I'll be here next week, but we're going to have this conversation on our next show as well. But I want to read some from this book. <clears throat> and it just, it's some real small, but it just kind of stood out to me. And it said, the sign of a true man and a good king uh, to lead will be an economic or uh, the economic uh, economy of enlightenment which values compassion, relationship, and ethics as well as the individual. So mm. when it comes to real men, there's a, a certain amount of compassion that we have to have. Mm -hmm. And there's a, you know, we have to be related and, and, and build that relationship. Because one of the other things that was mentioned, you know, and we didn't get to which we will get to it. And I don't want to, I don't want to spill the beans, but our next show, we're going to talk a little bit about this and we're going to go a little bit into is a man, you know, should a man be, you know, um, emotional or is a man, mm -hmm. should he have, you know, a, a little 
femininity when it comes to that that man you know mm -hmm. and i think we we lack a lot of that and i think you know if if we had more of that you know we can really connect to our right. partner right more right and our female companion so i'm i'm gonna stop there <laughs> because we're at the end of our show and then i let the i'm gonna start with the minister we'll get, begin to um, sign off and then we'll go ahead and close out um with our announcement for the day minister you want to so, yeah that's that's gonna be a good good show coming up when you hit that uh, topic but just just closing out and leaving on a positive note maleness versus manhood especially when we talk about our youth and some of our youth are in their 30s mm -hmm. some are teenagers um but those of us who have grown to be man and are still exhausting ourselves as men something that you can always do mentorship is a like somebody mentioned the principles mm -hmm. and about study, the key to study is the last part was the application of your study, yes, applying yes. those principles. And you can be a mentor to young men. Um, and that means it can be your son. It can be your neighbor. Right, right. It can be your nephew. It can be your cousin. Mm -hmm. It can be um, you can have a single mother who doesn't have a man in the home. And even if it's not a formal, it's just a matter of spending some time. Yes. You can go pick that young man up and take him out to a movie. If you like baseball, football, take him to a ball game with you. Mm -hmm. You're doing it already, but it can have a very positive impact in your life. Like I know here, we do work with groups of young men, but it's something that you can do to show them what manness is about. Yeah. So when you see that need, you can feel it. Even if it's just reaching one, that one that you make an impact on, can turn around and make an impact on oh, someone else. Yeah. Most definitely, most mm -hmm. definitely. That, that's very powerful, Mr. Minister. Very powerful. Uh, today's show, you know, was so enlightening. I, and I just want to say that, you know, from experience, you know, um, we have to be consistent with the outreach program. We have to be consistent in that teaching. And in that teaching, it's not always with words. A lot of times it's with your example of a walk. You know, sometimes, you know, I know for me, I, I can hear some things, but if I don't see it, I ain't listening. Right. You know, I, I, I had to see it yeah. and wasn't nobody showing it to me. You, you, you saying don't do this and don't do that, but you ain't showing me don't do this and don't do that. You know, so I know for experience, people have to see another way, whether it's to get money to change their lives, to better their, their educational situation. Mm -hmm. People have to see these things. They have to see it from someone who has mm -hmm. done it or are doing it. You know, I mean, it's not for everybody. It's, it's hard here. You know, you got big boulders. <laughs> you know, you got small boulders. You know what I mean? You got pebbles. Yeah. You know, so, but appreciate everybody for joining in this week. Thank you. Yeah, uh, whether we're saying without a vision, the people perish. Yeah, no? <laughs> and, and, and we haven't had that vision, so that's why a lot of us are perishing like that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that was powerful. Well, <clears throat> we hope you enjoyed the show today. Um, if you're on Facebook, like and follow us at Education Center Orlando. You can also leave a comment, review, mm -hmm. and or donation. Also, you can follow us on YouTube at Live Talk Education Center Orlando. You can also follow Yeremiah Israel author on Facebook and on the web at www.yeremiahisrael.com uh, for update and information, seminars, merchandise, books, my book, and much more. <laughs> and definitely you'll be able to register for our events there as well. Um, we thank you and, you know, we wish you the best. Stay safe because there's a lot going on and maybe we'll get to that point where we talk about um, all of that that's going on today. <laughs> <laughs> but stay safe, peace, prosperity, we're out. Okay, peace. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? For live. Are you ready? Let's do it. Uh, Are you talk. ready? Uh, this Are you talk. ready? Uh, Are you talk. ready? For the word of the day, uh, the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Uh, Are you ready? 
for live talk. Yeah. Cause it's about time to set, set it, it on. on. Are you ready? Let's go. For the word of the day. Hey. The knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Say Are you what? ready? For live talk. Yeah. Cause it's about uh, time uh, to set uh, it uh, on. Going all the way live with it. With live talk, increase your mentality, put away carnality, and increase your spirituality. Let's go. Live talk. Are you ready? This live talk. Are you ready? Live talk. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? Live talk. For the word of the day, uh. the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Are you ready? For live talk, because it's about time to set it off.